Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Friday, April 16th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Minnesota game is in 139 days. The game against Michigan in 225 days. The Ohio State spring game is tomorrow, and that is actually our topic this morning. We're going to do the show a little differently than normal, though. Instead of having on one guest to preview the game, I asked a bunch of people from our staff about what they're most interested in seeing on Saturday, and I got a bunch of different answers. So I thought that would be a good show. So it's obviously a question I asked Ross Fulton on yesterday's show, so you've already heard his answer. You won't hear from him, but pretty much everyone else from Buckeye Scoop wanted to weigh in. There's a, And it turns out there's a lot to look forward to. Um, there are interesting positional battles to watch all over the field. There's a bunch of talented true freshmen he'll get to see for the first time, including four guys who ranked as five-star prospects and at least one of the major recruiting services. So let's start with Buckeye Scoop recruiting analyst Alex Gleitman and one of the deepest position groups on the field for the Buckeyes. I know everyone's going to talk about either the quarterback battle or how, you know, potentially the defense gets fixed this year. But what I'm most excited about seeing in the Ohio State spring game on Saturday is the running back competition. Uh, we may not see a ton of Master T just because he's a veteran. They know what they have in him. And, you know, he's kind of on the thousand rep plan or whatever they call it to potentially limit the amount of hits that you're taking throughout the spring. But you have Master T. You have Marcus Crowley now seemingly fully healthy coming off an injury. Seal Chambers is, is still at running back and still trying to prove that uh, he can be a player that we saw flashes of at some point last season. Mayan Williams had an exciting end to the season while he wasn't able to play in the national title game. He showed uh, a little flash in the uh, Clemson game during the semifinal. So I'm hearing a lot of great things about Mayan Williams, and we'll see what we see uh, from him in the spring game. And then you have two excellent freshmen in Travion Henderson and Evan Pryor. And while I've heard that Evan Pryor might have a little bit to go when it comes to doing work in the weight room, I've heard Travion Henderson is the real deal. He recently lost his black stripe, and I want to see what all the hype's about. I think he you know, definitely could be a guy who maybe not right away, but maybe at some point during the season has a key role in this Ohio State offense. And I think we're going to get our first real look, real extended look of him in the Ohio State spring game. So quarterbacks are going to be exciting to watch. The defense and, and some of the new coaching staff changes on that side of the ball and new personnel is going to be exciting to watch. But I have my eye on the running backs. Thanks, Alex. Now, next up is Buckeye Scoop's ultimate insider, Nevada Buck. He has been churning out incredible content from his sources inside the program all month long. That has him excited about something that probably a lot of you guys are intrigued by as well. Hey, Tom, but the thing that I'm most excited about watching this weekend is going to be the quarterback battle. I know, you know, coming into the spring, that's what everybody was talking about. Um, as it's as the spring has progressed, it's become even more and more interesting as you've got three really, really talented kids back there and you know, C.J. Stroud came in as the the heavy favorite, I think, to to take the job, and and Jack Norris really made it a a dogfight, and that, that thing is really those those two are really slugging it out. And then you've got Kyle McCord, the National Player of the Year, coming in behind him, and really looking for an opportunity to make his mark. And I think this he's looking at the spring game to make a move. So for a lot of these guys that are playing in the spring game, they're just kind of going through the motions and kind of doing things trying to get out of it healthy. But for the quarterbacks they're competing and they're going to be slinging it around and every rep is going to be heavily, heavily graded and heavily scrutinized. And I think it's going to be a fascinating battle and you know, it's going to be a reason to watch the spring game to the very last you know, play because these guys are really competing for spots. And so it's something uh, I can't wait to see. And I'll, I know I'll be tuned in and uh, watching along with the rest of us. Thanks, Nevada. Now we'll go to Buckeye Scoop recruiting analyst Mark Giffler. He is going with another of the deepest groups on the field and one with an absolute ton of talented young players to choose from. I'm personally going to be really interested to see the wide receiver group on Saturday. Um, I would have to think we've seen enough out of Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson here uh, the last couple of years that they are probably going to be fairly limited in reps, which means a lot of the young guys are going to see a lot of reps. And I mean, let's face it at this point, the spring game has pretty much turned into a passing competition. Uh, the running game uh, will be utilized. I'm sure a little bit, but you know, we don't know how much they're going to tackle probably not much if at all. Um, so it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be a glorified seven on seven out there. And, and so I think there's a lot of interesting dynamics in the wide receiver room. First of all, you have an emerging talent like Jackson Smith and Jigba, who I think is going to probably be the next first round pick type of receiver out of Ohio state behind, uh, Olave and Wilson. 
And um, I know he's pushing uh, for even more, uh, an even bigger piece of the offense here uh, this fall. So I'm going to be interested to kind of see uh, where he lines up because he's a versatile guy, kind of like Garrett, who I think they're going to try and uh, find ways to get them all in the field together. So see where he lines up, how effective he is. Um, and then you've got the young guys, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Mecca Ibuka, they're getting uh, big time early reviews from the coaches and uh, black stripes are off already. And, you know, so I'm going to be interested to see how they stack up. And then you want to see, you know, how, you know, a guy like Julian Fleming, you know, it has developed, um, you know, played a little bit last year, but but not a, a ton. And you know, I think people are probably expecting a lot of him out of, um, you know, this fall in terms of uh, making that second year leap. So that's all interesting to me. And then, you know, you combine that, you've got the the young quarterbacks. Um, these are the receivers that they are going to be working with. You know, whoever wins this quarterback job is going to be throwing the ball to Marvin Harrison, to Emeka Ibuka, to Jackson Smith and Jigba. Those are going to be their receivers of the future. And, you know, what type of chemistry uh, do those guys have with with any of the three young quarterbacks? And kind of, so that will be kind of interesting to see, you know, do we see someone like Stroud or Miller or McCord uh, have, you know, you know, maybe extra chemistry with somebody you would think McCord and Harrison obviously have some chemistry and, but, you know, has, has a, has a Jack Miller or a CJ Stroud, maybe, you know, built a connection with one of these young guys. So I think that's all interesting to me and, and what I expect will be uh, again, a, a passing game display on Saturday. That's basically what it's turned into uh, the past few years um, since they've kind of gone away from tackling uh, to the ground and things like that. So I think, again, you talk about, you know, kind of glorified seven on seven type of uh, environment. Um, got all these receivers, you got guys fighting for jobs. You got, you know, the depth chart is going to be, uh, you know, again, behind Olave and Wilson, and the depth chart looks like it's wide open and, and that it's um, up for grabs for about six, six, seven different guys. So um, that's what I'm going to be watching uh, on Saturday. And, and um, you know, we'll, we'll see what the takeaways are. You know, we, we can joke about how, how meaningful this all is. You know, the, the Bam Childress joke is out there about, you know, uh, him being a spring game MVP every year, but um, you know, I, I do f- look for certain things w- along the lines of chemistry with the quarterbacks and um, you know, where guys are lined up, I think is also interesting as we kind of help uh, try and piece together the depth chart and what, you know, things are going to look like down the road at the receiver position. Thank you, Mark. That is actually a smooth transition from the whiteouts to my choice, which is the defensive backfield. Uh, that was obviously one of the biggest issues for last year's team. They're going to be missing both of the guys that were expected to be the top two corners this year. They're not going to play on Saturday. So that'd be seven banks and Cam Brown. That means it's an opportunity for guys like Legend Cavazos, Ryan Watts, Tyreek Johnson, Denzel Burke to go up against that incredibly talented group of wide receivers and uh, find out what they're made of. Uh, and then how are they going to line up those safeties then as well? Have they found a guy they can trust at the deep safety spot? Is there anyone who they can who have who can cover someone like Jackson Smith and Jigba in the slot? I mean, these are these are all serious questions, and we may start getting some more answers to those on Saturday. I cannot wait to see what that looks like. Uh, next up, and staying on the defensive side of the ball, is our man on the ground in Florida, recruiting analyst Dominique Smith. So the position that I'm really interested in watching in the spring game on Saturday are the linebackers. Um, you know, it's a big year for OSU and the linebackers. They're losing, you know, four, you know, elite linebackers, Justin Hilliard, um, you know, some people might question Tough Borland, but he did have experience. Pete Warner, Baron Browning, you know, elite linebackers who did a lot for that defense, especially once they got comfortable in the scheme. And I mean, Baron Browning was a beast. He was very versatile. Um, Tough Borland, obviously, in the middle was better against the run. Pete Warner, you know, was very, very versatile, uh, could cover passes. In certain sects, he dropped back at safety. And Justin Hilliard, what a story. And look how big he came up for us last year. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, especially this linebacker linebacker unit is very thin. Mitchell Melton's out. Dallas Gant is out. And I know they're expecting a big year out of Dallas Gant because he's flashed when he's gotten on the field. Taraja Mitchell, you know, it's a big year for him as well. Um, so it, it'll be interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to see guys like Cody Simon, how they take that next step. I'm looking forward to see, um, you know, how, you know, guys kind of adjust to the scheme uh, and especially since they have a spring to prepare him, you know, while they, there are injuries to Mitchell Milton, um, guys like that, um, Dallas Gant, who I just mentioned, it's good that at least they can watch, they can learn, they can take notes, take mental notes, and hopefully, you know, the injuries aren't too severe. 
so they can get back on the field. And um, I think this game will be very telling to see uh, the spring game. That is, if we really have to hit the portal, really have to hit the transfer portal. Um, linebacker from Tennessee, Henry, not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Um, he's a big time guy. He's an elite first round talent. Um, he's been linked to Ohio State, so I feel like he can definitely add value to the linebacking core. But um, yeah, that's the position that I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, and uh, we'll see how Coach Al Washington uh, has those guys and if they uh, will be ready to play. All spring long, every time we talked about a position group, I always found myself thinking, you know, what an interesting race that's going to be to follow. And the linebackers with a ton of talent, but zero returning starters, obviously right at the top of that list. That is a very good pick. Uh, Kirk Barton is picking another spot where there are plenty of talented guys all fighting for a chance to play this fall. Scoop family, what is up? What I am looking forward to in the spring game is seeing the six scholarship running backs. I mean, we've got a ton of kids out there. I know generally it's more of a throwing deal, but some of these running backs got to get hit. You know, got to see them out in space, see if they can be brought down. You know, Trey Henderson's here. You know, Pryor's here. So we got two freshman running backs that graduated early, which I don't know if we've ever had that before. Uh, so I'd love to see these guys. You know, Marcus Crowley's playing for a spot, Seal Chambers. You know, Master Teague probably isn't going to play much. So, you know, these young running backs are, I think they're going to get a lot of reps. And I'm excited to see them in front of the shoe. Um, running behind some makeshift offensive lines, which sometimes that's, that's what you, you got to deal with, but you're going against some makeshift defensive lines too. So, you know, can they rip off some big runs? Can they get to the second level? Um, hopefully they do some live stuff. I mean, in the past they haven't done anything live, but there's no reason not to tackle a spring game just because you, know, you have months for guys to heal up, you know, should something terrible happen, you know, sprain an ankle, roll an ankle, whatever. But, um, I'm real excited to see Trey Henderson. I, I want to see him get loose, uh, get on the perimeter, get to the second level and, you know, be that, that first round type of running back that we need to be successful. Cause that's the hard part is, you know, the teams that have been winning championships, man, they've got that first round type running back, you know, whether it's Clyde Edwards, Zilair, Najee Harris, um, going back to, um, Travis Atien, you know, three years ago, like it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we need a factor back and it's nothing against Master T, but like we need a guy who's got that gear and that vision to break off some long runs. So that is what I'm looking forward to seeing in the spring game. Last but definitely not least is Buckeye Scoop's beat reporter, Tony Gerdeman. He and I have spent the last month breaking down every position group in a lot of detail on the Buckeye Weekly podcast. So it really was not a real big surprise that he had a bunch of things he's excited to watch. You know, I know Ross is going to be looking for scheme and where guys are lining up and things like that. But me, I am a simple person. I'll be looking for the shiny objects. I'll be looking at the skill players and quarterbacks. And, you know, granted, I will be interested to see where Craig Young lines up. Do they put him back at safety and how much linebacker does he play? So I'll be looking forward to learning that. But for me, I think like probably everybody, it starts with the quarterbacks. I want to see what they look like in comparison to each other, in comparison unfairly to Justin Fields, in comparison to JT Barrett. And, and where in that spectrum do they do they lie? And I think that it's a pretty wide spectrum. So uh, you would hope that they would be in there somewhere. And uh, you know, does one guy stand out over the other, knowing that you can't put too much stock into a spring game? But when that's all you give us. What do you want us to do about it? I mean, we're going to talk about it and we're going to weigh it and we're going to grade it and we're going to do this and that and and um, just make it the focus that, that it is because that's all we have. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they perform. It's unfortunate. I don't know how much of the running game we'll get to see, even though everybody wants to see Travion Henderson. They want to see Evan Pryor. They want to see some more of Mayan Williams. You know, Marcus Crowley, of course, hasn't, you know, got his carries against Alabama, but hasn't really been part of the, the plan since 2019. And I know he's hungry, but this isn't really where you showcase the running game. And so do they get those guys involved in the passing game? I know that's part of Evan Pryor's skill set. I think it's part of Travion Henderson's as well. And maybe we'll see some of that while, uh, you know, also seeing I'm all you know, the, the, the passing game overall. I don't know how much Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave will see, but, Certainly looking forward to seeing Marvin Harrison, Mecca Buka, 
and Jaden Ballard, the freshman, all there and, and making plays and seeing what the future holds. Maybe some Julian Fleming saw him uh, at Pro Day. I know there's been a lot of questions and concerns about him on, ask, on the Ask the Insiders board, so there will be some – maybe some answers given on Saturday and, and hopefully he'll look good. And, you know, on the other side of the ball, everybody wants to see Jack Sawyer. I'm no different. Let's see what he can do. Um, you know, even though it's two hand touch, if he gets close to the quarterback, they're going to blow it dead. So this is really a, an opportunity to pad his stats. Not that these stats count, but if you want to stand out and just get close to the quarterback and they'll blow the whistle dead, you'll get credit for it in the box score. And, uh, you know, also the second year guys on the defense, uh, Cody Simon, should be playing a lot at linebacker. Let's see where, see what he does. You know, again, he's going to be put in a difficult situation, probably pass defending a lot. So it's not ideal for him, but you'll get to get to see what he can do in that, uh, in the aspect of defending the pass and then really defending the pass with the second year guys of legend Gavazos and Ryan Watts at corner. Let's see how they hold up and who are they going against? Who's throwing the ball and, and, so um, while you, you can't put a whole bunch of stock in everything in, in the spring game as a whole, I think there are bits and pieces here that I'm all I'm interested to see. I know everybody else is, and I think that's about my top seven or eight. So we'll see how it goes, and then uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about it afterwards. Thanks. Thank you very much, Gert. I am glad you mentioned Jack Sawyer. Uh, we have been hearing some really aggressive comps from him, uh, borderline irresponsible comps for him. Uh, and the type of player he has the opportunity to be uh, for the Buckeyes, he is going to be a lot of fun to watch. He he would be on my list as well. Uh, finally, we'll take a little bit of a step away from the different position groups and the schematic stuff. Like That's all going to be really interesting. It is just going to be wonderful to see actual fans inside the stadium again. Uh, as one of the few people who actually got to attend games in the Horseshoe last fall, it was really odd to walk in and just see cardboard cutouts and maybe a few hundred people scattered around the stadium. You know, it was like, this is a game, but it kind of doesn't totally feel like a game at any point because there should be like 100,000 people here and there's like a thousand. So uh, when the college football playoff started and there were thousands of actual real life human beings there, it started feeling, hey, like this is a football game. Yes, fans do make a difference. So does the band. So do the cheerleaders and Brutus and all the other things you have come to love about an Ohio State football game day. We are not quite back to normal yet, but all of those folks will be there on Saturday. It is going to be a big step towards what will hopefully be a very fun fall with a whole lot more people inside the stadium. So thank you to everyone on our incredible team at BuckeyeScoop.com for sending in their thoughts on Saturday's game. We will have a ton of coverage over the weekend. Tony and I will have a live pregame show streaming on our YouTube channel in the morning before the game. Then we'll do our live postgame instant reaction show afterwards as well. Those are always very popular. So you can make sure you don't miss them by subscribing to our YouTube channel to get notified when they start. That's at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Just hit the subscribe button. We have picked up more than 5,000 subscribers in the last few months. It is a ton of uh, a ton of people who are thinking, hey, this is this is really good content. I would like to get notified every time they post something because it's usually pretty good. All of our podcasts are up there. Interviews with players and coaches. We had video from Inside Justin Fields Pro Day that work out this week. It is just a little bit of everything there at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. So subscribe there. Uh, we will also, of course, have written in con written content, analysis, photos, interviews with players and coaches, much more, all at BuckeyeScoop.com all weekend. And if you listen today and thought, hey, that's a lot of people covering one football team, you are correct. Good job. We have an incredible team. This was not even all of them. Uh, and when we say you just can't get coverage like this anywhere else, we mean it. It is all at BuckeyeScoop.com. You should become a member today to get access to everything we do, including our Ask the Insiders board. A lot of our best information lives on there. Nevada Buck pretty much lives on there. Every time I have him on, we get a ton of additional downloads because everyone wants to know what Nevada Buck knows and what he uh, has to say. He always has much, much more to say on uh, our Ask the Insiders board than he can ever possibly say on this show. So if you enjoy those shows, hey, you might enjoy becoming a member of BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, we have uh, a lot of a really just a fantastic community of people there. Very active board. Lots of active conversations going on about just about everything. Football, basketball, wrestling. Lawn care, car care, it's a little bit of everything there. It's all at, on the SD Insider Sport at BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, that will do it for today and for the week. We will see you guys Saturday at the Horseshoe and then again for the next episode of the Morning Scoop on Monday. Have a great weekend and please enjoy the game.